when I was growing up, I really did not even know that there was a civil war in Missouri. And I was really surprised later on when I discovered that there were actually battles. Even more shocked to find out that Missouri was third in battles and skirmishes, only behind Virginia and Tennessee. On the night of September 26th, Anderson camped two and a half miles south of Centralia. Major A.V.E. Johnston of the 39th Mounted Infantry came into Centralia and he went to some of the citizens and said, where'd those guys go? Well, they're just outside there camped, but you don't want to go down there. Why not? Because there's like 400 of them there. Johnston did not believe him. So Johnston mounts his command and heads south towards Anderson's camp. There are about 10 guerrillas who Anderson sends north to sort of toll Johnston down. In typical Indian fashion, the guerrillas ride up within a firing distance of the command. They sort of act like they're surprised and turn around and gallop. This gives Anderson enough time to, to deploy his men in line and they are dismounted in front of Young's Creek. Johnston's men come in and they're on a hill looking down and they see 80 men. Johnston dismounts his men in a single battle line and has them march about 100 yards forward and prepares them to fire a volley at Anderson's men. What Johnston does not know is that Anderson has sent the rest of his men on both flanks of Johnston. And Anderson has told them when they mount and charge that as soon as they break that line, those men on the flanks are to go ahead and charge. Anderson mounts his men going uphill and the men are laying down on their horses because they had again learned from the Indians, you don't want to get shot, you want to get down on your horses. The tendency of soldiers who are firing downhill is to fire high. So as the guerrillas are going uphill at a trot, they wait until the Union soldiers fire one volley and they know that these are single shot infield muskets and they have to reload, which can take up to 30 seconds, 45 seconds. So at that point, the volley goes over the heads of the guerrillas. They put spurs to their horses and they're on the Union soldiers. Some have bayonets fixed and they're trying to fight. Some are trying to reload. Others have thrown their muskets away and are retreating. According to legend, it was Jesse James who was out front in the guerrilla charge and took on Major Johnston one-on-one -on -one and shot him in the head, killed him. Missouri was very important during the Civil War. Missourians were just really split over the issue of being pro-union and pro-slavery. And this really divided families in half where the father may be a Union soldier and the son might be in the, in the Confederacy. Missouri was one of those states that ended up on both flags. I think it's important to reenact this battle because it is who we are. It is our history. We own that. And history should never be repressed. It should be studied and we should learn from our history. This reenactment and this organization is not into finger pointing in terms of trying to persuade people who was right and who was wrong. We're honoring the people who participated in this battle. During the reenactment, there will be soldiers on both sides who will be falling because they've supposedly been killed. But in no way are we trying to glorify death there's going to be a lot of things that we're going to be able to offer the audience that weekend. We are going to have a camp. They will stay in costume and in person for the whole weekend. If you walk up to a soldier and ask him what's going on, he's going to answer you as if he were a soldier in 1864. There's also going to be sutlers there, book writers, lectures, music, food, a lot of things going on. The whole thing is free and open to the public. Other than parking and food that you might purchase and souvenirs, we're expecting a lot of people that particular weekend. Get out there early and enjoy it all. It's gonna be exciting.